man's personality and character is exuded through his haircut. Your image is important. Our high-end services range from a traditional haircut and shave to gray blending, beard shaping, and unwanted hair removal. Located at 425 Victoria Avenue East, book your appointment online now at modernmen.ca or call Tammy 306-522-4111. Modern Men, a haircut for the modern man. Hello, I'm Sean McNall, owner of TG Marketing. We are a promotional product company located in Regina, Saskatchewan. Originally founded by Tom G. McNall in 1985, we are now in our 35th year of business. My brother Ryan and I, along with our great staff, have carried the torch since Tom retired in 2011. For those of you who don't know what we do, we sell items with a company's logo on it like clothing, pens, phone chargers, Bluetooth speakers. The list of products available is endless. Our products are a great form of advertising. Whether you want to give a gift to a valued client or show your appreciation to your staff, we have a friendly team that can help find the right product for your needs. The key to our success has been our customer service and our vast knowledge of products in our industry. We ask the right questions to get you in line with the proper product for the project you are working on. Stop by 1046 Winnipeg Street in viewer showroom. Get some ideas for that next promotion you're working on. Let's make your business what everyone's talking about. Let's go back to Seattle and join Warren Moon, and I'll say first, you were the original. Show me the money. Then, how about that? Yeah, I'd love to be back on again, and, and I love my fans up in Canada, and I want to thank them all for all the years of, of, of being behind me in my career, and uh, 
Uh, hopefully you guys can get hockey back here real soon because I know you're dying without it. <laughs> There's no doubt. And CFL, too. And there are millions of Warren Moon fans. Thanks, Warren. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Ask and you shall receive Warren Moon, one of two men in both the Canadian Football Hall of Fame and Pro Football Hall of Fame, will be with us a little later on today as Super Week continues here on the RP Show, working our way towards the big game on Sunday, Tampa Bay versus Kansas City for the NFL Championship. I'm Rod. He is Darren Moose DuPont, and I'm excited to uh, talk sports today. I assume you are too. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go. Uh, The guests on the program today, you just heard Warren Moon. He will be on the program. He's coming up in hour two. In hour one, our director of scouting, Craig Smith, which producer Clark tells me we haven't had on the air since September. I had a very tough time believing that, but I I shouldn't doubt Clark, and I don't. So I just can't wait to get Smitty in here, two-time Grey Cup champion, and uh, we will talk about all things CFL and NFL. And Mike Abu Meshrick, the 10-year CFL or Grey Cup champion, alum of the Ottawa Renegades, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and Saskatchewan Rough Riders, is scheduled to join us here in hour one. But from what we're told, storming in Calgary, He's in Calgary, and there is a 30% chance that he won't be on the program with us today. Clark, how did you arrive at 30%? I'd love to know the chances of Abu bailing on us today. So I'll get to your comments. Remember, this is not viewer takeover. This is the warm-up, so I can't get to all of your comments right now because this is about us right here, right now. And the quick six show topics, hit it, please, Director Jordan. (laughs) By the way, if you don't like my show topics, because they are in accordance to me, importance to me, go watch something else. You're going to be shocked at this, though, dupes. All right. You ready with number one? Sure. Fred Van Vliet sets a Raptors record last night with 54 points, including a franchise, or sorry, a career high 11 threes, as the Raptors beat the Orlando Magic 123 108 at Amway Arena in Orlando. Episode 413, basketball, leading off. Leading off with the Raptors. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think I'm any different than any. Average Canadian sports fan, and for sure, Western Canadian sports fan, that the Raptors have been junk for much of their history up until the last couple of years. So listen, Fred Van Vliet, if he goes down, well, he's now going to go down as one of the greatest Raptors ever because he was on the championship team. Who previously held the Raptors career high? DeMar DeRozan. Right. He's a Raptors great too, but he didn't want to be in Toronto, as you recall. And was shipped out in a trade. We all know the story. But if Fred Van Vliet goes down in the heroes, the annals of Toronto sports heroes, like a Joe Carter, like a Robbie Alomar, like a Wendell Clark and a Daryl Siller, I'm down with it. I, I, I would tell you that Fred Van Vliet is now in that realm. Yeah, Wouldn't I would you? Too. I would too. i go along with that for sure. And that's what you want, right? I, you would have thought Kawhi, Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady. But no, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Fred, Fred Van, <laughs> Van Vliet of all people, of all people. So, yeah, but that those guys represent to me just a bad part of Raptors history, which is most of their history, you know. Yeah. So anyways, kudos to Fred. Can you believe it? That's number one of the quick six show topics today. Point two. Let me open my Twitter here. Your Tuesday NHL leftovers brought to you by Tupperware. I like it. Think about that. Here are my leftovers from last night's games in the National Hockey League. Number one, Vancouver is not in Montreal's class. Not even close. Nobody's even arguing that today. The Montreal Canadiens had their way with the Vancouver Canucks at the Centre Bell last night. Point two, Patrick Laine's debut with the Columbus Blue Jackets was not solid. No, it was not. To quote Sam Mitchell, here's his stat line. Zero, zero, zero. And he was a minus two. We're not saying do us all a favor and go quit, (laughs) like Sam Mitchell said. But no, line A's debut wasn't great, but he only had one skate with the Blue Jackets as a team. He will get better, but I'm just, history will say that was his first game with the Blue Jackets was that. Zero, zero, zero. Number three, gotten a mild argument. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, point three of my leftovers. Number three, I got in a mild argument last night. Hockey guys agreed with me. Chumps didn't. That Patrick Kane's little shootout move where he literally almost stops in front of the goalie. How are you supposed to stop that? And they're like, well, Rod, he didn't stop. It was a slow roll. I would love to see a goalie stand up and two-hand him right right here. (laughs) I'm serious. 
Rod's rant very early today. Just take you know for what? Bronco plumbing and heating. Someone's yeah. got to put one on the chin for all the other goalies in the NHL. It's like wasting one. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll take the games. <laughs> wasting. So, so, so the next time he stops and tries to do this cutesy little thing, whack! Hextile style, Hextile style, and he will never do it again. Sorry, I'm getting worked up. It's two straight days that I'm sticking up for the goalies, but enough's enough because it's making the goalies look foolish and. Who do you think has the advantage there? Now, Shifley tried it the other night against Markstrom, and Markstrom stopped him. Shifley's not Patrick Kane. But he's pretty good, but he's not Patrick Kane. Right. You're right. Uh, point four, the Sens are the perfect slump buster. The Oilers have their confidence back. We may look back at this week, this uh, sweep, the Oilers of the Senators, is where, this, where the Oilers' season turned. You wait, but I think that's what's happening. Yeah. And point five, I miss the Vegas Golden Knights. I got to be honest with you. I'm not that guy where they're the only team that I follow or love. So when they're not playing, I lose touch with everything else, obviously, because I just came up with four other points. But when your team's not playing, and that's because of COVID, it does really suck. You know, Mm -hmm. so that's my leftover on that. So now it's starting to become a thing. People are writing in going, what about my team? What about this team? Colorado's winning without McKinnon. At me. Right? What, those are my leftovers. What are your leftovers? Brought to you by Tupperware. I think this could become a thing. I think it could. Uh, Don McNeil agrees in central Ontario. He says, uh, put a time limit on shootout attempts. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. A shot clock. Because you know what, Kane? Eh, it might save him some teeth. And I think that's a like curling. A time limit? That's a great idea. I was wondering, how do you enforce that, right? Because, you know, according to the rule, forward progress, he's still moving forward. So how do you, you know, put a rule on that? That's exactly how you do. Thank you. Well, Don is no dummy, other than being a Houston Texans fan. Sorry, Don, but you're probably questioning that too. Mark Zosol says, I'm missing my Golden Knights, Saskatchewan's team. I'll go along with that. I have been calling them Canada's team, but Saskatchewan's team works too. Mark Zosel, by the way, had a poll on his own Twitter account yesterday saying, should we send Darren DuPont to Gobbler's Knob, Pennsylvania for a live report next year for Groundhog's Day? Are you willing to go? I'll go anywhere. Gobbler's Knob, Pennsylvania. Let's do it. Sounds like a good time. Uh, Point three, it's our poll question today, part of Super Bowl week coverage here. The poll question for Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision Center is, which tight end will have more yards in Super Bowl 55. I'm deferring to Clark. This was all his idea. Let's do little prop bets all week long as it relates to Super Bowl. Yesterday, the majority of you thought that Patrick Mahomes would throw for more yards. What are they saying today on Facebook, Clark? I haven't tweeted the poll question yet. It doesn't even appear on Twitter yet. Do we have any results? There we go. What is it? 75% say Travis Kelsey. You know, everybody's voting for the Chiefs individually. And that's fine. If the Bucs win the game, you haven't come out with your uh, prediction yet for the game, have you? Not yet. You're saving it? Saving it. But Smart guy. Yeah. Smart guy. Um, from Jeff Cabillas in Winnipeg, it says, it feels like the Jets' flames is going to game six. Oh, I know. And you know what I thought? I watched most of that game last night. The Jets and the flames are nearly dead even. And the unfortunate part was all the injuries that the Jets had in the playoffs last year. But those teams are very, very even. You know, look where they are in the standings. Look what they've done against each other head to head. They've gone to overtime or a shootout, like extra time twice. So tonight is in a way um, the rubber match. There's a tonight, whenever they meet again, it's, it's a lot. Are we getting bored of the Canadian division yet? No. Okay. Just asking. But I can see how it might happen. You just play the same teams over and over and over and over. Super exciting off the hop. But I could see how it could, you know, start to become a little bit, you know, boring. Does get to be a little much. I got to go to my emails here. Uh, I was on the Anecdote podcast last night. Three fine young gentlemen interviewing me. It was it was great. Did a lot of uh, CFL talk there. But I threw threw this one black, back on them. We were talking about Brady. Here's just a question for you all. It's in a way a rhetorical question, but. Would the New England Patriots have won any Super Bowls without Tom Brady? And while you would, I know, you just should have seen his eyes just now. (laughs) It's a great question. 
I don't know the answer per se, but listen, Brady left, and it's fine. It's a divorce. These, these things happen, right? I think Brady's happy to be out of New England, and apparently they're happy to be done with him. Whatever. These things happen. But everybody thought he was a systems quarterback. He never would have won without the Belichick system. Well, look where we are now. The Patriots missed the playoffs. Tom's got the, the, the Bucks in the Super Bowl for the first time ever as a home team. It's not a crazy question to ask if the Patriots would have won any Super Bowls without Tom Brady. Sounds like tomorrow's poll question is what it sounds like. So or, you think it's that good of a question? I think it's a great question. I don't know. Um, you look, they've had some weapons. They've had, they've been, they've had great offensive lines. They've had really good defenses over the years with Tom. But who would they have had instead? And... <sighs> I just, I know. I, I think no. Any one of the 198 players that went ahead of him in the draft, I know they weren't all quarterbacks. But there was some good ones. Chad Pennington went ahead of him. He won some games in the league. There was a lot. There was a lot. We got a Calgary viewer asking uh, and a Flames fan where we think Sam Bennett will be traded. I don't know about Sam Bennett. And uh, you saw Brad Tree Living, the general manager, saying that they're in no rush to trade Sam Bennett. It's not a good situation there. He wants out. I don't know that a change of scenery would even help him. But here's my question. If we're talking about trades, why don't the Winnipeg Jets go after Tony D'Angelo? Like their blue line is really just a bunch of guys, especially beyond Neil Pionk. And what is D'Angelo? Swift, Swift skating, offensive guy, puck mover, everything that they need. So I was listening to spitting chicklets on the way in here today, and the guys were talking about D'Angelo, and they're like, who would want him? He's got a history of problems everywhere he's been going back to junior. Put him, put him in a room with Chevy for, for uh, 15 minutes. And Paul Maurice. <laughs> and Paul <laughs> Maurice. I think that the Jets should go after Tony D'Angelo. And if you follow the insiders, there apparently is a ton of interest. For the uh, the former Rangers. Now, I guess you can call him the former Rangers blue liner because they said he's not going to play I guess again. I can't swear anymore, but I'm going to clean this up as much as I can. But for James Henderson, he's watching in Manitoba. He says, Tony is not a nice guy. <clears throat> for those of you that don't know, my dad worked in the National Hockey League for 26 years as a scout. So I remember when he used to fax in his game reports. Here's a story. I don't know if I ever told you this. It was about a player. I'll tell you later who it was. But he sent in a scouting report. And on my dad's scouting report of this player, he played for the Moose Jaw Warriors. The scouting report said, great player, great skill, skates fast, works hard. Players, teammates say he's an R's hole. Send. Dee, 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 dee. The fax. Fax comes back. It's from either Craig Button or Les Jackson or something. There's a lot of R's holes in the NHL. Can he play? You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So maybe they find a way for Tony D'Angelo to play. That's all. Um, <clears throat> I know everybody's writing in with breaking news. And it's not that big of break, breaking news. Like Jeff the Stamps fan says, breaking news. The Calgary Stampeders signed DB Brandon Dozier. Is that breaking news? That happened yesterday, dude. That was yesterday. So let's move on. Point five. It came up the CFL best league logo of all time yesterday. And people kind of miss took what we meant by that when I put the clip to, twi to Twitter. Not, it wasn't the greatest team logo of all time. It was the greatest CFL league logo of all time. I think we can all agree everybody's favorite is not the one they have now. So people were sending in photos of, uh, yeah, of what they like, their hats with that league logo and so forth. But a lot of people were writing in, oh, it's the Las Vegas Posse. Oh, it's the Calgary Stampeders, which incidentally was stolen from the Ford Mustang, but whatever. I was, we were talking about this in the morning meeting. I smell a bracket. <laughs> what else is going on? Oh, yeah. So imagine this, folks. If we pitted the old Rough Riders, Saskatchewan Rough Riders Safeway logo versus the new S logo, and we pitted the uh, Renegades logo against the Red Blacks logo and the two Alouettes logos, we had this huge bracket. To we so you, once and for all, decide what's the greatest logo in CFL history. And, and now we're talking teams. Is it the Memphis Mad Dogs? Is it the Sacramento Gold Miners was real nice. People have talked about the BC Lions bear paw, lion paw, that that's great. The Edmonton Eskimos, sorry to say, logo is iconic. That thing's known all across the continent for the Eskimo way. 
I think we should do a bracket. What do you think? Let's put it together. Let's absolutely put it Off together. Off the top of your head, and because you're a Ryder fan, you can't say Saskatchewan. What's the best logo in CFL? The Ar- Argo, I like the Argos. Argo fans wrote in and said the Argos boat logo. And you know what? I can't go against that. I really love the uh, that might be the best logo in CFL history. Yeah, that's kind of where I go. I just love the I just love the the colors, the navy and the baby blue. I love the Argos. Ah, Genghis T. Smith writes in. I believe he's in Detroit. He says the Baltimore Stallions. That was beautiful, blue and silver with the three stars down the back of the horse's head. That's cool. Uh, Chris Bird in Toronto says CFL logo. I respectfully disagree. The current logo is better than the half maple leaf, in my opinion. That's why we put it to a vote. That's why you put it to a vote. That's why we do these things. Yeah. So I feel a bracket coming. Oh, and point six, a last one here before we bring in uh, our next guest and talk a little Super Bowl. Junior hockey returned to play. I'm not going too far down this line, but I did talk to some hockey people in Alberta. They had got it all laid out. They're going. And the... Saskatchewan Western Hockey League people and the Junior A people feel they're going to know either way within five to seven days, whether they're playing or not. They have their fingers crossed. Um, I've heard of this bubble concept for Penticton, and that's not spilling the beans. That's been in BC newspapers. I've read it. Yeah. The American teams might end up coming and playing out of a bubble in Canada, likely BC. So I guess we've waited this long. Can you wait another five to seven days? We don't have any inside information on what's... Well, we do, but none that we're willing to say. Let's put it that way. But Alberta's got it figured out. So kudos to them. Kudos to them. Looks like we might get some actual junior hockey, which is, quite frankly, uh, my favorite brand of hockey. When we come back, our director of scouting, Craig Smith, this has been the warm-up for the Four Seasons Sports Palace. Come in and warm up at the Four Seasons. You're home for the NFL. You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus across all 10 provinces and 31 states. Also live daily on YouTube. And listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. An Original 16 to fit your active lifestyle. Introducing Original 16 Canadian Ultra Lager. Just 80 calories and 2.5% alcohol. Taste without compromise. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard, and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. While the world seems to be facing one challenge after another, our focus at FlameTech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 4D simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. 
A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. He's covering everything that matters to you. It's the Rod Peterson Show. Tune in live Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to noon, to catch the show live and be a part of the action. Take control by commenting live and sharing the show with your friends. Honey, can you get one of the kids to show me how this Twitter thing works? Honey, I need to get on Instagram. Time for more of the Rod Peterson Show. It is. Welcome back to the uh, program, everybody. We have a couple items of breaking news today. One, Sean Lemon has signed with the Edmonton football team. Good friend of ours. He was an analyst of ours uh, some time back. And the NLL, National Lacrosse League, has canceled any plans for the 2021 season. That is most unfortunate. The focus will now be on the 21-22 season. They're hoping to play next fall. So we'll get uh, some more information on that as we move along. And, hey, I've enraged Stampeders fans, Darren. I know. In other, what else is new? In other news, it's a day that ends in Y. <laughs> but they're saying that their Stampeders logo is the most iconic in CFL history. I said they ripped it off from the Ford Mustang. Dougal Cameron, Stamps fan, says the Stamps horse logo is iconic. And it has differences from the Ford Mustang. I'm sure. I just look at it like a quick glance. It looks like the exact same logo to me. Jeff, the Stamps fan, says both those logos are symbols of excellence. I'm not going to argue with you there. All right, let's bring him in now, Craig Smith, our director of scouting, two-time Great Cup champion. Obviously, a ton of things to get to with him today. Smitty, how are you, my man? I'm doing okay. One day at a time. Good for you. Well, I should get you one of these bracelets that says one day at a time, Smitty. It works well. But I, I I'll, say it, I'll say it again. I'm always, always, always happy to see your face. Can't wait till the day that you can get into the bunker here. Love chatting with you. Um, let's delve right into our Super Week coverage. All right, Tampa Bay, Kansas City. You're watching all of the coverage. What's your early read on how this game's going to uh, play out? What a great matchup. Both teams are, are, to me, they're they're so even. Um, you know, the defenses on both sides of the football are, are good. Uh, each team, each quarterback has an array of, of weapons, both receiver-wise and at running back. Um, you know, the the big the big thing to me, the big difference is is Mahomes, and he, you know, people are going what. The big difference is Mahomes. What about Brady? Well, I, I, the, the, the difference is, is, is the mobility that Mahomes has. You know, they're reporting that, that his turf toe is, is 90 to 95%. So he, his mobility is going to be fine. There was, a, there was something said yesterday on NFL Network, and it was talking about he was, he's the, uh, the quarterback that has thrown the most on the roll out of the pocket. And, um, and, the thing about that is, is when he gets out there, it's not just running for his life. He's using his eyes. He's looking downfield, and he's he does a great job of accurate throws. And and you know what it's like, um, a receiver. You know he had everything's predicated on timing, and when the pocket when he ha- breaks the pocket, then things all hell breaks loose. So those receivers get an opportunity to get into open open areas. And Mahomes does a great job with regards to that. And I think that might be the difference. You know, it kind of reminds me of going to the CFL. And I'm not comparing this guy to Mahomes, but there's a guy that we had, Casey Printers, in 2004. Well, he won the Most Outstanding Player Award uh, uh, because of his ability. He would he, he would use his, his mobility, roll out, and he would hit guys downfield, hit D-Roy, hit Thelwell, Claremont, all those guys downfield when he broke the pocket 
he won the most outstanding player doing that. And and Mahomes is 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 like is the best with regards to that. You know, you've been around championships. I mentioned you've won two of them. I want your take on this. Because I don't think it's any small thing. Kansas City Chiefs aren't going to get into Tampa till Friday. Normally, they'd have been there yeah. all week. Tampa yeah. Bay's playing at home for the first time of a Super Bowl combatant, yet it's in an empty stadium. Well, I guess it's not empty. 25,000 will be there and 35,000 cutouts. So maybe that is a bit of a wash. But how do you think the COVID, uh, the way that's affected this Super Bowl, will it make much of a difference in the way the game goes? I don't think so. I think... It's it's a I think it's a good thing that Kansas City is staying home until Friday. They're in their own facility. There's no distractions like in previous years. Uh, you know they'll they'll use their own facilities and then fly in. Um, usually it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the, the three work days. So Friday they'll finish and then they'll hop on a plane and go. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is now Tampa. What are they doing? They're staying at home. They're in their own facilities. So it's kind of you know the same thing for both teams. Um, so uh, I don't think it's going to, the, the scary thing is if somebody gets COVID and, you know, obviously two of the guys went and got a haircut and this, the, their barber had, had COVID. And so they don't, they didn't get COVID, but they're on that COVID watch. So let's just hope nobody gets COVID. Hopefully everybody's going to be there. Hopefully everybody's going to be, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, able to, to play and, and we'll have a great game. I'm going to the question wall here, by the way, Smitty. I know you don't mind. And actually, I should mention our Super Week coverage is brought to you by Original 16 Canadian Ultra Lager and Original 16 to fit your active lifestyle. Superior taste with only 80 calories and 2.5% alcohol. Taste without compromise. Viewer William Works says, great to see Craig on the show. I think the Super Bowl is going to come down to defense. What does Craig think? Absolutely. Defense is, is critical. Uh, but that's where I say that's where you can do as much as you can as far as uh, Tampa is concerned. And uh, the, the thing is, is he can break and make plays. He can break the pocket and make plays. And that's why I say it's the difference. But, um, you know, they did a good job. Aaron doesn't have the mobility that, that Mahomes has, but they did a good job. Uh, that defense played so well. I love they, the, the three, four, those four linebackers are, man, they're as good as anybody in the league with Shaquille coming off the edge, the two inside guys in uh, uh, White and, and David. Th th those guys are just fantastic, fantastic linebackers that, that can run to the football and, and, and uh, you know, that type of thing. Key is Winfield. Winfield is a guy that was a, a, a draft pick, second-round pick this year. And, uh, you know, he is – his dad played in the NFL. Now, he's a guy that we're not sure if he's going to play – and the other one is Whitehead. Whitehead is in the secondary too. So if they have those guys that aren't going to play, it'll be it'll make it more difficult. And Dominican Sue in the middle, you know, uh, you know, he he can he can. They were talking the other day that that uh, you know, uh, Mahomes can step up. I mean, uh, you know, Mahomes can step up. So they need somebody in the middle that's going to you know create a, a push. And who who else that can do that is that. Defense is, is critical. And, you know, hey, Kansas City's no slouch. You know, they've, they've got some some darn good they, – they've been a weird team this year. You know, a lot of times every, every – you know, a lot they lost two. And and some of those other games, it wasn't like they were knocking the crap out of teams where you'd figure that they would. They did enough, to, you know, to, to do that. And you think back of last year, uh, you, you know, when they beat – Dukes is uh, Duke is Titans. Duke is Titans went up the week before. Houston's the way they went up. Yeah, you know who cares? Mahomes, let's go. Let's do what we got to do. And and so I I can hardly wait. You know, another key is 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 Remmers. Is he going to be able to to fill in for Fisher? And he seemed to do okay. You know, once Fisher went down in the game and he filled in last week. Now he's got a whole week to prepare. Um, you know, so they they should be okay. But yeah, I agree. Defense is going to be critical. We'll see what what and the other thing is Spagnola. Well, what the, what has Spagnola done in his career? Well, you know, what did he do? He beat he beat Tom in a Super Bowl, and as a defensive coordinator. So there there's another thing. You know, can he do that again? Can he can he cook it up so that they? Oh no! Oh, the video. Regard, 
Video's getting choppy there. Well, hang on, I'm going to cut you off, Smitty, and hopefully that refreshes some comments from our viewers. Uh, Tom in Winnipeg, Tom Halleck says, Hiya, Craig Smith. Hiya, Jasper. Your dog's the star. Alan, the intern, writes in and says, The duo rock star of the day, Craig and Jasper. So there you go. You're, he's becoming a star, your wonderful dog, uh, Jasper. But Smitty, i got to ask you this, though. Start of the year, your power five teams. Remember that? Your top five teams, or at least who you thought would be in the mix. If I'm not mistaken, all five made the playoffs. Did they not? You had the Bucks in there. Oh. You obviously had the Packers. Yeah. You had the Colts. I think you were pretty right on with those, if I'm correct. New Orleans, New Orleans and Baltimore, I believe. Uh, and, and Colts was... I thought, you know, with Rivers coming in, you know, the quarterbacking, he he was he was good, but then there were times when he would throw that pick, and you know, so but the, you know they they did well, um, but yeah, uh, yeah, just just with Brady with all those weapons, I thought, oh boy, they're, you know they're going to be pretty good, and of course Kansas City, Baltimore, they they weren't quite as good, uh, but you know they still made the playoffs and and, and did well, but. Uh, yeah, oh, hey, and and think about think about Kansas City's weapon. Are they going to be able to stop Hill, and then Kelsey, and then there's the other guys. You know, Sammy Watkins evidently is 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 able to play now. Hardman, talk about speed. Talk about the the ability to go downfield, and then also underneath and Kelsey. Um, just just you know, holy cow! It's I can hardly wait. It's going to be such a good one. Absolutely. From our YouTube viewers, Rich Allender watching in the States, he says, Travis Kelsey will get more catches. Gronk will get more yards. That is our poll question today for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center. Which tight end will have more yards? I voted for Gronk, but that's probably just because I'm a fan. I'll get to um, more comments in a moment, but do you have a prediction on the game, Smitty? I'm saying well, Bucks 37-30. What do you got? We got Lee Corso here. Well, I tell you. Yeah, I don't have a head, big headgear, but, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in, in the Tampa area, you know, when I first started uh, doing the scouting and stuff like that, NFL Europe was going great guns, and they used to have training camp down there, and so we would go down there for three weeks, and it was like, I was like a kid in a candy store, you know, going down there and taking a peek, and, and uh, you know, so I got really, uh, I, I, I got to know the Tampa area well. Geez, I wish I could be down there this week. I mean, it was it's a great, great area, uh, lots of fun, and I know I'd be down in Miguel's. Last time I was in Miguel's, that was 2015. We were there. I was there with uh, some of the red black guys, uh, Jean Marc Edme and, and Jeremy Snyder, and we had we had supper there. And guess who was there? Dan Goodspeed. So Goody, Goody, Goody came over. Yeah, Goody came over and said hi. I bought him a couple drinks, and and uh, it was it was really really cool because I, I love Goodspeed. He was with us, and then he he helped coach a little bit with us, and. Just a great guy. and uh, But this Miguel's Mexican restaurant, fantastic. One of the better ones. So uh, We were just so talking about Goody the other day. You know who, who he reminds me of, both in looks and demeanor? Randy Quaid. Cousin Eddie yeah. from the vacation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, Clark. Uh, Real nice, Clark. Ab- That's kind of. Ab- absolutely. Absolutely. But this is the team right there. That's who I'm predicting is going to win. I'm cheering for these guys. I- I'm-, I'm hoping for, for Buck. So, uh, you know, when, when they won in 2003, I think it was, you know, I, I love Gruden and uh, I bought books on, on Gruden and, and uh, a lot of people don't like him. I don't give a rats, but because of that, I, I, I really like them. I like that team. Um, you know, I, I uh, and, and I, I've always, like I, I put on Facebook the other day, uh, I, I love those old creamsicle uniforms. I thought they were pretty cool, but uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm hoping for them. I'm hoping for a great game, but I, I truly believe that, that, that Mahomes is going to be the difference, and, and I think that Kansas City can win it by 10. And Woo! I think it could be close. Yeah, I think it could be close until real late, and then, you know, then Kansas City could, could pull away. But I'm <sighs> Remember hoping. last year? Remember last year? We thought the 49ers had it. <laughs> I did. I, I thought. Yeah. Hey, so I think halfway through the game, I thought they felt pretty good, you know, and then, oh, oh guess what? Another comeback by by Patrick. So yeah, sixty we'll minute game, we... Six, sixty minute game. Our viewers were laughing because they could see that you were holding 
headwear from both teams. So now we have it. Yeah. Chiefs by 10. Smitty's made the prediction. There's comments coming in about Tom Brady. I'll say this about Tampa. You're right, Smitty. We've spent a lot of time around Tampa together, but also separately. I was looking at photos of Tom Brady where he's living. He's living in Jeter's house, eh? And it's six miles from the Buccaneers facility. That's the commute for Tom Brady every day. He lives on the water in a 23,000 square foot mansion with eight bedrooms, obviously a pool and a hot tub. Life's rough. And I guess lastly, nice do, do you see him playing past 45? Everybody seems to think so. You know, I, I bought it before I got cancer. You know, I bought his book and, and of course I didn't, I went through all that and didn't even look at it until, you know, uh, probably about five months ago and took a look in a lot of the stuff. And I can understand, like, he plays a position where he doesn't need to uh, clean and jerk a lot of weight. He doesn't need to, you know, bench a ton of weight. He, he I, I looked the other day, he ran a 5.28 at the combine, and he might even be 5.25 now. Who knows? But the thing is, is his flexibility, he's worked on his flexibility, and he has worked on strength, but it's, it's not like uh, power, power lifting or anything like that. And, and if you, I think you guys got that book. And, yeah. and, and you know, he, yeah. he works on that. And his flexibility is critical for an athlete. And his position, it's not like speed, because like, a lot of positions, you lose your speed, right? And then, okay, you're done. Well, snap, gun, gun snap, stand in the pocket, and, you know, and, and, and you can throw. So I don't know. Maybe till till uh, forty five, maybe a couple more years, but uh, he he hasn't lost anything with. Her. You see some of his throws downfield; they're 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 so cool. They're, well, I, mean, I got to say this. I, I will say this. I was watching Sports Center the other night, and Bruce Arthur was on there saying his arm strength's gone. I'm like, what are you watching, man? I've watched every game. That's what annoys me with people like that. Hey, lastly, we are running out of time, but a quick note on the CFL. What are you hearing, Smitty? What are you feeling about playing in 2021? You know, I mean, COVID's, I don't know. You know, I, I'm just praying that they, they play. Um, I don't, I, I can't see it starting when they would start normally. Um, I could see maybe later on. Vaccine is, is, is critical and, it, you know, I'm praying. I'm just praying. I haven't heard anything. I haven't talked to any, any CFL people with regards to that. You know, I know that. Kyle said something on Kyle Walter said something on on the internet the other day that this has been a real real tough time, and you, you can imagine you know I, I know it's tough for the players there's no doubt about it but it's also tough for a guy like Kyle who's who's trying to you know they're getting from the top you know we gotta we gotta cut we gotta cut salaries you know so and, and you know who knows what's gonna happen I mean this COVID oh it just bothers me yeah I can hardly well. Well, we're out. we're all the fun. same. We're we're praying that they play. We are fresh out of time. Smitty, thanks. Enjoy the Super Bowl, and uh, let's do this sooner than later again. Sounds good. Thank you very much. That is our great director of scouting, Craig Smith. Just a wonderful guy. Can't wait to get him back in here post-COVID. We'll be back with a sports update, the CFL report, breaking news today. Lots going on. It's the RP Show you are watching on Game Plus TV. Live daily on YouTube and listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Bronco Plumbing and Heating. Proudly serving Regina and surrounding area since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade and Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade and Program, or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 Ford F-150 Explorer or 2020 Ford Escape and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of thoroughly inspected pre-owned vehicles. 
It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln in Regina. Look like the pros. Shop Ultimate Fan Zone. NHL, NFL, MLB, CFL, NBA, and more. We have something for every sports fan. Autograph jerseys, prints, jersey stitching, custom framing, and collectibles. UFZ is your one-stop sports store offering fans official team gear. Check out Saskatchewan's Man Cave Corner on River and Main, downtown Moose Jaw, or visit us online at ultimatefanzone.ca. Built by fans for the fans. Direct West has been the bridge for me from not dealing with social media or digital presence to having a presence. You have to take the leap of faith, so to say. And I'm glad we have. Direct West has helped us out immensely to get our presence online as far as digitally and also with the social media page. To see the results is just, uh, just puts a smile on your face. <laughs> hey, it's Warren Dean. I understand more than anyone how changing weather affects your day, and that's no different for your vehicle. That's why I look to the experts at Suds Full Service Car Wash. They have a wide range of exterior washes, including Lava Shield with towel dry. Looking good, Natalie and Kirby. And don't forget their famous Suds Ultimate. Thoroughly cleans the interior of your car. Open Monday to Saturday, no appointment necessary. Head to Suds Full Service Car Wash today, where they treat you like family. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED sign rental. Video. Video production. Event, event management. Look no further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. Did you know you can catch all the best moments from the show on all our social media platforms? Now back to the studio with Rob. Welcome back, everybody. Normally, we jump right into a sports update here, but we're going to pause that for a second. It's funny. What's, what's not funny is the breaking news today that NLL has announced they are scrapping their return to play plan for this April. They're focusing instead on the 21-22 season, hoping to begin next fall. You see the difference in opinions coming in from Darnell from Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions. Oh, yeah. Says, with the NLL announcement, does it make me hopeful for the CFL or junior hockey? Then on the flip side, Jeff, the Stamps fan, says, so the NLL seems confident they can survive missing this season. That at least gives some comfort to fans. Two different ways of looking at the same news, right? For sure. That's all that I'm saying. Let's go to Calgary now, where they are home to both the CFL and the NLL, just like here. Mike Abumeshri joins us, 10-year CFLer. Listen, Abu, can you give us a weather report, please? My Alberta friends are telling me it's been sunny and hot all week, and now you're deluged by snow today. What's the deal? I'll give you a Simpsons weather report. It's snowing! <laughs> yeah, crazy snow. It's just like... Uh, Typical Calgary weather. Um, but we're going to talk Super Bowl, right? Yeah, well, we are. But I just listen, we got a lot of Calgary viewers, and I wanted to know in case they didn't know what their weather was, because I used to live there. It's wait 15 minutes if you don't like the weather, and you'll get something else. So, anyways, thanks for, thanks for the weather report. So, to the Super Bowl, <laughs> Tampa Bay versus Kansas City. Where are you on this matchup, Abu? All over the place. And uh, I just wanted to say, uh, since the GOAT is playing uh, in Tampa Bay on the weekend, I thought I would also include hey, the, the GOAT, GOAT that we yeah! all know of, Alexander Gauthier. I love as, it. Uh, one of the greatest people and rough riders and Calgary Stampeders of all time and Winnipeg Blue Bombers. He'll do anything for a buck, this guy. <laughs> hey, 
He was my old uh, seatmate. We flew side by side uh, together in the 2011 season, as the GOAT would remember. We had a lot of great chats. So um, what's tipping the scales for you, Abu? In uh, in this matchup, by the way, Darren, can you write this down? We're taking everybody's predictions. I got Tampa by seven. Craig Smith just said Chiefs by ten. I want you and the goats' predictions. Alex, think about it while who's well, answering his. Yeah, I, I'm gonna like uh, normal. I'm gonna take the long way around the block to answer this one because, uh, and I'm gonna use some of Kayla, my 11 year old son's wisdom. He uh, he doesn't think uh, Tampa Bay has a chance. Everyone's old. You know, uh, Mahomes and uh, and the Cheetah. And look how cool these guys are. And I'm just going to talk to some of the plus 40 guys over there. Come on, kid. You know, he, he doesn't know who Tom Brady is. He doesn't know who Gronkowski is. He doesn't know who JPP is. And, and Dominican and Sue is probably the guy that I want to look at. Um, a lot of people are talking about the pass rush, the defensive end, JPP and um, that, that other guy that plays defensive end for... Uh, Shoot, there, can't think of his name. But, uh, but Do Dominic and Sue, he's he's the guy. He 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 is the guy. He's looking for the ring, you know. He's the guy that doesn't have, you know. Three years ago, he was the man. Nobody wanted to play against him. He was, you know, he would he was uh Aaron Aaron Donald, you know. Um, so watch for him to push up the middle. He might the guys on the outside might get the sacks, but he's gonna get that push up the middle. Um, and in any big game, it comes down to quarterback versus quarterback. You can talk about all the other stuff and all the other things. And never have we been in this situation. I think it's one of the best quarterback matches matchup ever. Um, and and Caleb's but Tom Brady, another form of the GOAT. He's the GOAT, right? He's the greatest. And I, I didn't really like Tom Brady until he got plus 40. Until I started realizing how much he and I had in common. Yeah, you're you know, a hater. We were both drafted in. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to Abu Meshrek 101. Yeah. We've had this discussion. Listen, um, I've had it with yours. Listen, I didn't know you are going to bring on the GOAT. Can we get Alex's prediction for the Super Bowl? And you don't need to go as in-depth as Abu just did, GOAT. What do you think is going to happen Sunday in Super Bowl 55? You know what? I think uh, Caleb is son actually know better about the uh, NFL than I do. I actually don't watch the NFL, and I'm here for uh, moral support for uh, for Mike. Actually, he was coming and visiting, which is always great to see him. You know what? You don't want to know how many games I watched of the NFL this year. Like I, I don't, I don't really follow. So my gut feeling, um, the goat could do amazing thing, and. <laughs> And that's where I would put my money, but it's it's more for the Cinderella story, you know. Uh, that would be awesome for him to win it, but I got I got no clue who's gonna yeah who's gonna you're, win. You're, you're cheering for guys. Tampa. Am I getting this goat? You're cheering for Tampa. Am I right? Yeah, exactly. I would cheer okay. for Tampa. Perfect. Too bad my, uh, my 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 guard from Quebec, Duvernay Tardif, is not there with uh, Kansas City. Maybe that would that would have been different. But uh, yeah. with this scenario, I'm cheering for Tampa. Ooh, that that would have been you. Who do you like better, uh, Tardif Abu. or or Dan Goodspeed, your other buddy? Uh. You know what? Don't, don't make me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Abu, we got to run. Did you give me a prediction? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go with Tampa Bay. I, I I get in trouble a lot of times with the Cinderella story, but I got in trouble too many times betting against Tom Brady and uh we have too much in common he and I. Okay, Abu's going by with Tampa Bay. Gotcha. All right, thanks for the surprise, my man. I appreciate it. Don't get in an accident out there. Stay safe and I guess I'll see you on the weekend. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Mike Abu Meshrick joining us here from uh, Calgary. And that was oh, William Golston, the other defensive end. And Dominic and Sue and William, William Golston. Golston. Okay. Those are the two studs. Some other guy. Yeah. I just, uh, I know we got a break, but I'll tell you a funny story. You talk about a small world. Alex Goche was a left tackle for the Riders and right or left tackle. Good speed was the other. And it was 2011. And everywhere we flew on the road, him and I, we sat again with, with each other. So I was writing a book and I needed to come up with Hall of Famers in the Canadian Football Hall of Fame by chapter A to Z. Yeah. So he and I were coming up with names A, Damon Allen. B, Wally Buono. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. C, mm, we'll come back on that one. So for like a 90-minute flight, the GOAT is giving me all these names. He's like, W, Westwood. And I'm like, it's not in the Hall of Fame, GOAT. 
keep going. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So I'm writing them all down. And that was uh, 2011. And I'm still working on that book. C's got to be Calvillo now. Oh, Calvillo. Not in 2011, yeah, 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 He yeah, wasn't yeah. in yet. You get what I'm saying. Oh, for sure. It was a fun game to play. It was like when you're in the car with your kids, when you are kids, playing those games. That's great. Place names and so forth. You get A, then I got to go B, then you got to go. Right. Yeah, yeah. We'll be back with that sports update. Viewer takeover. Warren Moon on the way to everybody. You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus TV across all 10 provinces and 31 states. Live daily on YouTube and listen live at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Direct West provides us with stats and analytics, and, and it's amazing for us to look and see that, you know, each year we're 10 to 20 percent higher on our Google leads. It's great to see the success that our, our locations are having. The Direct West app gives us an opportunity to be in one place for people to find uh, any of our locations or our commodities. Without Direct West, we would have to be in multiple digital places. I would recommend Direct West. They're great to work with. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. Introducing Original 16 Hard Seltzer. The refreshing taste of delicious peach with vodka made in Saskatchewan. New Hard Seltzers from Original 16. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions is Saskatchewan's only full-service supply chain company. Strategic sourcing, PO creation, and order expediting, VMI and vending solutions, and free delivery are just a few of the supply chain services we provide. If your company needs it, Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions can get it for you. Price, quality, service, Rockstar Supply Chain Solution is helping Saskatchewan companies buy better. This right here is time well spent. Why not pour yourself a smooth Saskatchewan-made Original 16? Warm up to the opportunity to seize the day. Bronco Plumbing and Heating. Proudly serving Regina and surrounding area since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade and Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade-In Program or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina. Send us your opinions now. We won't victimize you unless you really deserve it. Now back to your host, Rod Peterson. Welcome back, everybody. This is a quick one. Sports update, the National Lacrosse League, the largest and most successful pro lacrosse property in the world, today announced that plans for an abbreviated season this spring have been canceled due to the uncertainties arising from the ongoing pandemic. The league, with the full support of the Board of Governors, will now move to start a traditional season in the fall. 
of this year. Jesse Pujarvi scored his first two goals since rejoining the Oilers as Edmonton beat Ottawa 4-2 at Rogers Arena last night. Nikolai Ehlers scored the eventual game winner for the Jets and a 3-2 home win over the Calgary Flames. Matthew Kachuk scored twice for Calgary. Both clubs played their backup goalies following four, Calgary's 4-3 shootout win a night earlier. Tyler Toffoli and Josh Anderson each scored twice in the Montreal Canadiens celebrated Captain Shea Weber's 1,000th game with a 5-3 win over the Vancouver Canucks. Fred Van Vliet set a franchise record with 54 points and hit a career-best 11 three-pointers as the Raptors beat Orlando 123-108. That eclipsed the previous mark of 52 set by DeMar DeRozan. And two-time All-Star pitcher Chris Archer has reportedly agreed to rejoin the Tampa Bay Rays on a $6.5 million one-year deal. The 32-year-old righty is expected to get an opportunity to compete for a spot in a starting rotation that lost Charlie Morton and 2018 AL Cy Young Award winner Blake Snell this winter. This sports update for Ballers Rec Room. They can handle all your food and fun needs. Reserve your table for Super Bowl 55. And for Red Bull Canada, Red Bull gives you wings. I'm just checking the YouTube feed here, seeing if they got any questions for us. We'll have to carry those over into our two dupes. We got a lot of topics on the table here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's the greatest CFL logo of all time? We're worth talking about building a bracket here because why not? What else do we have to do? Ray in the six writes in. He says, hey, Rod, my favorite is the Argos Bolt logo and the old BC Lions logo from the 70s. Looking Ooh. forward to the RP show bracket, as am I. Warren Moon joins us next hour as we continue our super week coverage. We'll talk about Telemiracle, too. You got to get your tickets, everybody. It's all coming up right after this break here on Game Plus and your favorite digital platform. Head to YouTube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. While the world seems to be facing one challenge after another, our focus at FlameTech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. An original 16 to fit your active lifestyle. Introducing Original 16 Canadian Ultra Lager. Just 80 calories and 2.5% alcohol. Taste without compromise. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Bronco Plumbing and Heating. Proudly serving Regina and surrounding areas since 1978. We are excited to announce the new Bryant Furnace Trade and Allowance Program. If you have a working Bryant Furnace, 15 years old or less, you may be eligible to receive a new furnace at a discounted rate. If you'd like to take advantage of the Bryant Trade-In Program, or to hear how we can help improve your home, give us a call today at 306-781-2090. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 Ford F-150 Explorer or 2020 Ford Escape and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. 
Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of thoroughly inspected pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital Ford Lincoln in Regina. Building a deeper connection with our fans by putting them in the show. It's a new era of sports talk. The Rod Peterson Show airs from 10 to noon, Monday to Friday on Facebook Live. Join the conversation today and tune in. Online, on your phone, at home, at work. Follow us on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. And subscribe on YouTube for all the content you want to watch. Don't wait. Do it right now. No. Let's go back to Seattle and join Warren Moon. And I'll say first, you were the original. Show me the money. Then, how about that? Yeah, I'd love to be back on again. And, and I love my fans up in Canada. And I want to thank them all for all the years of, of, of being behind me in my career. And uh, uh, hopefully you guys can get hockey back here real soon because I know you're dying without it. <laughs> There's no doubt. And CFL, too. And there are millions of Warren Moon fans. Thanks, Warren. This is the Rod Peterson Show. That's right. And uh, Warren Moon will be with us again. We haven't had him on the air since the spring, and he's coming up here. Good day, you all. Welcome to episode number 413 of Canada's Daytime Sports Talk Show. We've been through a lot today. We've had our director of scouting, Craig Smith, on. Mike Abumetrick's been on from Calgary with a live weather report. And he brought on another former CFL or with, her Alex, uh, with him, Alex Goche. It was fantastic. Yeah. But I'm jumping right in this. Moose DuPont is, uh, is with me. And here we go. Let's hit the quick six show topics, please, Jordan. <laughs> and thank you. Uh, there's a lot going on, a lot more than you would think in day number 303 of the pandemic. You know, you think there's nothing going on, but there's a lot going on. So here are the quick six show topics as they are in importance to me. Number one, Fred Van Vliet has entered the pantheon of not only Raptors greats, but Toronto sports greats. I don't think anybody can disagree. You Eastern Canadian viewers, probably a little more Raptor fans than I am, but you tell me. Last night, he set a record for single-point scoring in Raptors history, 54 in the Raptors' win over Orlando, 123-108 at the uh, Amway Arena in Orlando, and you're not disagreeing. Like, it's... Well, he's already won a championship right? oh, yeah. two years ago. He's still on the team, so I'm putting him in with the Joe Carters and the Robbie Alomars and the Cito Gastons, I guess, if you will, and the Wendell Clarks and Dave Keon. Shoot, why not? Yeah. Where'd he go, Fred? He's there. He's there. And, like, you know, when you look at all the stars, they haven't had a lot of team success, but, you know, Kawhi Leonard and Kyle Lowry and Tracy McGrady and Vince Carter, they've had some stars through the organization. But Fred Van Vliet sits on the top. Yeah, single game score. And here's where I am with the NBA. I'm the guy that'll watch the Raptors intently, but I have a tough time watching Denver, Utah, per se. Or if I am watching that game, I'm watching for Jamal Murray. But I got to have a reason. I don't, you know, I'm just not the biggest NBA fan. Doesn't make me a bad person. What I am is a huge NHL fan. And that brings us to point two. My Tuesday NHL leftovers. And we have distinguished that our leftovers will be brought to you by Tupperware or something of that ilk. Yeah. So I got to open my Twitter feed. Where is my Bed Bath and Beyond? They Bed sell Bath. those containers. <laughs> right. Um, so it's uh, I was on my live YouTube feed there. So I got to call it up. Here are my five leftovers from Tuesday's games in the National Hockey League. Number one, Vancouver is not in the same class as Montreal. They're not close. Nobody's even argued with me on that one. Point two, Patrick Laine made his debut in Columbus last night. His stat line was 0 0 0 and dash two. Point three, Patrick Kane's shootout move, I believe, should be made illegal. Nobody's really argued with that here around here today. I had some backlash on Twitter for that. You can't come in on a breakaway and slow right up. He almost snow plows every Like, come on. You can stand there and stick handle forever? wrong and I'd like to see a goalie stand up and hex stall him across the teeth on behalf of all goalies so he never tries that again and one of our viewers I don't remember who it was said they should institute a shot clock on the shootout and that is what 10 seconds yeah seven yeah less yeah so six maybe NHL do the right thing point four of the leftovers the senators are the perfect slump buster you'd think for the Oilers, they were. They all scored them, what, 12-7 and two wins. I think the Oilers got their confidence back. 
You got Neon Leon and McDavid, top of scoring. You got Stuart Skinner getting his first career win. You got Jesse Pugliarvi scoring twice last night, his first two goals of the year. Thank you, Ottawa. Kicked their butt and sent them on their way, and I think the orders will never look back. And point five, I miss the Vegas Golden Knights. So here's how the NHL for me is different than the NBA. I really miss my favorite team, Canada's team, the Vegas Golden Knights. But I can still watch other teams and enjoy just as much, yeah. obviously. But with the NBA, I watch the Raptors, and that's about it. How about this one? Caesar writes in and says, The Canadians are on top of the NHL power rankings as of today. I was a little upset because I got up this morning, I opened my email from the NHL, and it didn't have the power rankings in there. I'm like, it's Wednesday. Right. Where's the power rankings? And then all of a sudden, everybody started sending them to me. Uh, and here we go. So Montreal, number one team in the NHL. <clears throat> I love it. Jeff, the Stampeders fan, says, don't forget about Pinball Clemens. I think that he is in the pantheon of Toronto sports icons. But you know what? I've never lived a day in Toronto, so I don't try to profess to know their business, just like I don't like them telling me my business as a Western Canadian guy or a, or a farm kid. Do you know right. what I mean? You don't know my world. I don't know your world. I don't know what it would take to market the Argos. I don't know what, what it would take to make them relevant again. So I'm just throwing out some Toronto sports names, and if pinball is in that group, cool. I'd, li I'd like to think that he is. Um, point three is our poll question. For Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision Center, which tight end in the Super Bowl is going to have more receiving yards? It's a delicious question, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And an hour ago, leading was the Chiefs' Travis Kelsey, and it would appear that he continues to lead. Are people just in love with these names, Darren, or with the Chiefs? or what? Because yesterday, Patrick Mahomes won the poll for having more passing yards than Tom Brady. But they're the reason they're in the Super Bowl for a second straight year and favored to win the football game. Um, the players are very good, best in their, in, in their positions. I mean, Travis Kelsey, to be among the league leaders in receiving as a tight end, very impressive. He is one of the best, not just the best tight ends. He's one of the best receivers in football. So it's a tough poll question for sure, but he, he is there. Well, I just love the thing with Gronk. It's not much different than with the Patriots. He literally lulls the opposition, the defense, to sleep all game, and then wango, right? Tom just finds him at the perfect time. Yeah. And that could happen in the Super Bowl or it may not, but we're all getting very excited. And did I mention that Warren Moon's coming up later on in the program from the Pro Football Hall of Fame and Canadian Football Hall of Fame? So that's going to be great. We'll be talking about these things. Uh, point four, another tough question that – we couldn't really settle on an answer in last hour, and that is, would the New England Patriots have won any Super Bowls without Tom? Because when the divorce happened last year, pretty much around this time was when Brady was hinting that he was done in New England. Everybody was saying, oh, Tom would have never won a Super Bowl without Bill Belichick. Never would have the Patriot way. No, Tom's a system quarterback. Well, lo and behold, the Patriots are got to buy tickets this weekend to the Super Bowl or watch on TV and Tom will be down on the field. So my question is, would the Patriots have won any Super Bowls without TB12? It's tough to answer. My inclination is to say yes, but who would that quarterback have been? Yeah, I don't know. Drew Bledsoe was a good quarterback, but that, he was kind of winding down um, when Brady was taking over. Um, but, <laughs> you know, I just don't know. I really don't. If Tom had never got the opportunity to start and he had never played, I don't know if they would have won. I really don't. doesn't matter. They had a great defense, really good offensive line. They've had some weapons on offense over the years, but not a lot. They never dazzled you. I mean, Randy Moss was good when he was there, but no, I, I just I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. Viewer William Mace says, I don't think so. Tom is the best in any league. Viewer... Greg Clevgard says, where was Tampa last year? They never had Brady. They were lost in the wilderness with the same head coach, the same defensive coordinator. Famous Jameis Winston was their quarterback. They did add some pro bowlers. They did. And they've added Leonard Fournette. They obviously added Gronk, who was <laughs> Tom's best friend, right? Yeah. So they've added. But they wouldn't be in the Super Bowl without Tom Brady. So I think it is a very decent question. Wayne in Victoria, B.C. says, how many Super Bowls did Drew Bledsoe have? Uh, 
It's all Tom. Point five. What's the best CFL logo of all time? <laughs> we could drop anchor on that for a while. And this came up. We were talking about the CFL League logos. Right now, somebody had mentioned that it, the current logo looks a bit like a marshmallow. I don't disagree. You really like the logo from the just before, like the 2000s. Yeah. Yeah, with the half maple leaf. Looked like it was moving. I really like the logo that I grew up with, the helmet with the CFL and the maple leaf in it. Um, but people took that to mean when we put it on Twitter, what's the best logo of all time in any team in the CFL? And I thought, well, that is an excellent question, but that's not what we were asking. Well, maybe we should ask that. And uh, one hour ago, I put it out there. Maybe I smell a bracket. I do too. So, something else to do here over the winter months here in Canada. And uh, right now, I, I just got to say, and you can't vote for your team. So for me, I, Saskatchewan's off the board for me, and it is for you. I got to say the Argos boat logo. And yeah, just so a lot of people in Calgary saying the Stan Peters logo. I say that was a direct ripoff of the Ford Mustang. That's what I legitimately believe. I'm not trolling here. I say the Argos boat logo. I really like the Alouette's bird, too, by the way. Mm -hmm. I really I like that one. I don't mind the Tiger Cats. I like the it's colors. Okay, yeah. It's okay. But yeah, Toronto for me. The color scheme's great. Um, the boat's great. I, I lo love what Toronto has going on. I really do. Yeah, so it's uh, we'll get that bracket going. Yeah, we will. Uh, point six, junior hockey return to play. Um, we don't know. I talked to a hockey man in Alberta today. They're going February 26th. We're hoping that in BC and in Saskatchewan, we're talking about Canadian major junior hockey here, will be playing shortly after February 26th. I mean, time is running out. Today's what? It's February 3rd. So we're all hearing things. I heard the potential of a bubble in Penticton. That's not spilling any beans. That's been in newspapers. There's a huge hotel there that has said, we'll house all the teams. We'll feed them. You have a bubble here. We're good. So what Alberta's doing is six weeks, 24-game season, and that's what the other provinces are hoping to do. The one thing I do know is that we're supposed to know within five to seven days. That's what I'm told. And I'm like, you know, we've waited this long. I guess we can wait another five to seven days. So anyways, this is the warm-up. Come in and warm up at the Four Seasons Sports Palace. You're home for the NFL, where they'll have the game, of course, on Super Bowl Sunday. But I got to ask you this. That's all the sports topics. Let's talk about life for a second, Sonny. Yes. Well, when I say come in and warm up at the Four Seasons, my brother, the cowboy, called me last night. And he actually was at my house. He stopped in to drop something off. And he said, what are you doing for Super Bowl? And I said, oh, not too much. And he goes, well, it's going to be minus 28. I think I'm just going to hunker in at the farm and watch the game. I said, well, I can't go wrong there. And this morning I was getting ready for the game and the wind was howling and I'm looking out the picture window. You've been in our place and I didn't get down. I thought, man, it's miserable and nasty out there. And as you know, I torture myself with my weather for my weather app. I have the forecasts and weather of Miami, Phoenix and Las Vegas on there just tortures myself. I don't know why I do that, but I'm like, I can get through this. If the worst thing is the weather, I'll be fine. Like, I don't know how you're dealing with this. Yeah. My mom said to me, God bless her soul, she's not with us anymore, but she says, I need, the, I need the four seasons, Rodney. I couldn't live down south. I need the snow. I need the leaves falling. And I'm like, you can have it. If I never see another snowflake for the rest of my life, I'm good. But that's just me. And I'm willing to deal with this. This is the first time, and now we're going on three years, I think, that we haven't gone to Phoenix. Florida, we've been more recently, but not Phoenix, which I call Disneyland for adults. Like, I just, I just yeah. love it. Haven't been able to get there through the passing of both my parents, leaving my last job, which was not smooth. A lot of things have happened in the last two years. But my wife and I have agreed. We don't want to travel in this climate. I see everybody, and when I say climate, I mean this environment, the pandemic. You see people complaining about having to drop $2,000 when they come back from uh, international travel. And stay in a hotel for three nights. And I'm thinking, yeah, that sucks. But I didn't want to go anywhere anyways. Yeah. So where are you on? I'm with your mom. I'm with your mom. Come on. I love the four seasons. Okay. You know, there's nothing better than when it starts to melt and it's spring and the grass starts growing and, the you know, um, everything starts warming up and melting. Love that. Summertime is obviously great. Fall, crisp, 
put on a sweater, you know, shorts in the afternoon, football weather, love that. And then when the snow falls, I love like, you know, tons of snow, sun shining, the Christmas season, but you know, I like the changing of the seasons, sticking through it. Like, give me the beginning of winter, give me Christmas, and then let, then let me go till spring comes. You know, the odd winter vacation to a ski resort, give me that on a weekend or a long weekend, but then let me go somewhere warm for the rest of the winter. I'd be into that. But I like the changing of the seasons. For In sure. an ideal world is what you're saying. Yeah. No, not me, because I've been to so many camps, you know, football camps in Florida, and they're usually in the spring of course. And I just, I walk around and go, I can't get enough of this. And if, as you know, moderation is not really in my dictionary. So the more sun I can get, the more ocean I can get, the more, I just can't get enough of the it. ocean is a yeah. wonderful place, but this is how I've changed. Cause I used to drive around Phoenix, drive around Scottsdale and just go, why don't I live here? Why didn't I go to school here? Why didn't I apply for a job? Yeah. And I would be so mad for a week. I would ruin the whole week. I know. Yeah, so I now know. it's like, eh. I know. And then, like, L.A., you get down to L.A. and California. It's just, for you, Florida and, and Phoenix, this might be the face-off, though. Because I love the four seasons. I, I do. I think, it's, I think it's great. This is hilarious. Oh, you, ladies and gentlemen, this is the face-off for Ultimate Fan Zone and Mad Greek. I love it. Thank you. As Jacques Dupuy has pointed out yeah. from Ottawa, this is the face-off. Donald Mitchell says, I'm with dupes. Four seasons rule from your mom. We always enjoy doing things in all four seasons. From Janelle in Saskatoon. What'd she say? It slipped off the screen. I. She said, nope. She's ready to get out of here. But, but she's with you, not wanting to travel. Yeah. Pat Janik says, sun is good. Damn, Tampa would be good right now. <laughs> they look good down there. Greg Clevegard says, different strokes for different folks. That's why we're here. As my dad often said, I've talked about my mom enough, my dad, who was a hockey man but also a farmer rancher, said, you can't eat mountains. Told you that before, right? When we go on a family vacation, I'm like, Dad, this is so beautiful out here. Can't eat mountains, son. That's good. We, we make our money back on the flatland. Good advice. But can you imagine the money, the throwing around money that the jug's going to have next time we go on a warm vacation? Been saving it for a whole year. The slush money. Oh, Yeah. Uh, the face-off is brought to you by our friends at the Ultimate Fan Zone. And listen, you got a few days to go down and get your Tampa Bay or Kansas City gear from the Ultimate Fan Zone in Moose Jaw. Where is it on this thing? You just printed a brand new thing here for me. Here it is. Your one-stop <laughs> shop for the sports fans on your list. Memorabilia, collectibles, licensed team apparel, and more. Visit the Man Cave downtown Moose Jaw or find them on Facebook and Instagram at Ultimate Fan Zone Moose Jaw. And for the Mad Greek in Moose Jaw. Available for licensed dining, takeout, or delivery. Head to themadgreekeatery.com for more information. Warren Moon joins us next. You're watching the RP Show across all 10 provinces and 31 states on the Game Plus television network. Also live daily on YouTube. And listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED sign rental. Video. Video production. Event, event management. No further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. We started Suds Car Wash in 2003. There's a bit of us in every part of the business. I've been working here since I was about 10 years old. Hard to believe it's been 12 years since. Working with my family has been great. My mom and dad have taught us the importance of hard work. I've been here since I was 10 years old and my dad has taught me a lot about quality work. From all of us at Suds Car Wash, we make your car shine. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. 
Find out more at rockstar.com. Look like the pros. Shop Ultimate Fan Zone. NHL, NFL, MLB, CFL, NBA, and more. We have something for every sports fan. Autograph jerseys, prints, jersey stitching, custom framing, and collectibles. UFZ is your one-stop sports store offering fans official team gear. Check out Saskatchewan's Man Cave Corner on River and Main, downtown Moose Jaw, or visit us online at ultimatefanzone.ca. Built by fans for the fans. There's something for everyone at the Mad Greek Eatery. Delicious Greek dishes, pizza, lasagna, pastas, soups, salads, and much more. The Mad Greek Eatery brings the best authentic Greek cuisine right to you. Available for licensed dining, events, delivery, and takeout. For the best taste and huge portions, there is only one place. Visit the Mad Greek Eatery, downtown Moose Jaw. Call for takeout and delivery today. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. For more of the Rod Peterson Show. Welcome back to the program, everybody. We're waiting on Warren Moon, and I don't know if I don't think to use another uh, Western term. I don't know that Clark's seen hide nor hair of Warren Moon. Yeah, today. So I'm not. I'm hoping we get him. He has never missed before. But it gives us an opportunity to take care of some business here, mostly. The CFL report. The Calgary Stampeders have signed long snapper Aaron Crawford. The native of Medicine Hat, Alberta, played in 98 games with the Hamilton Tiger Cats from 2013 to 2019. The St. Mary's University product made great cup appearances with the Tie Cats in 2014 and 2019. Stampeders also signed American defensive back Brandon Dozier and defensive lineman Chris Odom. Meanwhile, the Hamilton Tiger Cats have signed American quarterbacks Jacob Knipp and Austin Simmons, along with wide receiver Khalil Lewis. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders have signed American offensive tackle Antonio Garcia, a third-round pick by New England in the 2017 NFL Draft. The six foot seven, 305-pound Garcia also spent time with the New York Jets, Indianapolis, and Miami. And the Toronto Argonauts have re-signed American defensive lineman Drake Nevis and signed wide receiver Terrell Sinkfield, also defensive back Jamel Peters and defensive lineman Kyrie Thornton. So there's our daily CFL report. And with the Argos signing that load D tackle Drake Nevis, almost all of my top 10 are off the board dupes. Yeah. What's left, I believe, now is my number one pending free agent in the Canadian Football League is linebacker Enoch Mwamba, most recently starring with the Montreal Alouettes, formerly of the Indianapolis Colts, and also the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. So we got him now, one of two members of both the Pro Football Hall of Fame and the Canadian Football Hall of Fame, Warren Moon, joining us from his Seattle office. Hey, Warren, did that CFL news warm your heart out there on the West Coast? Man, you're full of information today. Do you do this every day? I mean, that's a lot of uh, transactions going on right there. I know. We do do it every day. I do it as a show of support and salute to the Canadian Football League because I still don't know if they're going to play or not, Warren. So, yeah, we are doing it every day, and we can't wait for the three-down lead to come back. But, sir, it's Grey Cup week – or, sorry, Super Bowl week, the Wednesday of. Obviously, doesn't look like you're there. What would your normal super yeah, what would your normal Super Bowl week be like for you as a Hall of Famer? I would be down there. I would be down there doing uh, Radio Row, which they probably don't have this year from what I understand. Everything's kind of being done from Zoom. 
Uh, I'd be down there doing appearances and different things for the NFL as well as some corporate appearances. So I'd be very, very busy at this time uh, just just getting into the week. And then by the weekend, you know, doing a lot of things that have to do with the actual game itself. So this is a different year, a different year for everybody in a lot of different respects. But uh, it's still going to be a great game because you have two really, really good teams, two really talented quarterbacks. And I don't think that's going to mess – with anything, you're going to have 22,000 fans in the state in the stand, so there will be noise, there will be energy. So I think that part of it will be good, but there's no question leading up to it is going to be a little. Well, you know, I know that you do so many interviews. I don't know if you'll remember us talking about this the last time you were on. It was pre NFL season, and you predicted that they would kick off on time, but we weren't sure if they were going to finish. And they did, right? They had to move some games around a little bit, but they got them all in, Warren. Just looking back at the regular season, how did you feel about the job the NFL did pulling it off? Yeah, it's been an amazing job that they've done, uh, especially trying to keep all these players and staff members safe throughout this whole pandemic. But you got to give the players and the uh, the coaches and, and all the staff a lot of credit, too, for, for being disciplined and you know staying away from uh, bad situations that would uh, cause them to maybe get the virus. Uh, like you said, a few games were moved around, but no games were canceled. We've had every game uh, go all the way through until the uh, the Super Bowl. So all we have to do is get the Super Bowl played, and we have a complete season. And they did it without doing it in a bubble like uh, the NBA did it. They did it traveling all around the country and, and taking all these different risks. You've got to really give a lot of people a lot of credit for pulling this thing off. Hey, I'm going to get to the matchup in a minute, Bucks and Chiefs, but there's, you know how loved you are in Canada. So there's a lot of comments coming in from Rachel to Sony. She says, I loved Moon's Cookies back in the day here in Edmonton. What is, uh, that's the first I heard of that. What's the story on Moon's Cookies? Well, I started a chocolate chip cookie business when I went to the Eskimos and uh, it was something I, I've always had an entrepreneurial um, uh, background as far as wanting to have my own business. And, and chocolate chip cookies were huge in the United States, Ms. Amos and Mrs. Fields, but I didn't see anything like that up in Canada. So I had a great cookie recipe because my mother taught me to bake when I was in high school. And um, I used that recipe to start my own cookie business. And I had five stores around the, the uh, Edmonton area. I had one in Ed West Edmonton Mall and the huge mega mall there. And then when I went to the Houston Oilers, I, uh, I had five stores in Houston as well, and then I finally gave it up because it was just becoming too busy for me to try and be an NFL quarterback and run a business at the same time. So I ended up selling it to Mrs. Fields, but it was a lot of fun. A lot of people love the cookies, and people still ask me about those cookies all the time. So they must have made an impression on people. Oh, that is amazing. I'm just I'm just a podunk farm kid from Saskatchewan. We didn't get any out here. Now I'm feeling left out. Uh, <laughs> I should have won games, you know. And maybe it would have made the crowd like not boo me as much as when I came out the tunnel. <laughs> I should say you're loved in Canada, but not here. Somebody wrote that in earlier. I said Warren always kicked our butt, which we know. But Warren, somebody also asked your take on Deshaun Watson, if you don't mind, and you might know a little bit about it, being a quarterback in Houston. Where do you stand on that situation? Yeah, you know, Deshaun and I are really good friends, and uh, I, I haven't reached out to him about this. He knows I'm available if, if he needs me to, for any advice. Uh, it's a shame that this situation uh, and this relationship is not working. It's falling apart because Deshaun's been a great ambassador for, for the city of Houston. He's a great uh, citizen and person, and he's also a fantastic football player. But, but a lot of things have happened within the organization and, and it's just kind of soured him over the last few years. And, and he just wants to move on and go to a, an organization where he feels like is more in line with what his thinking is about winning football. So I think that's where they are right now. Um, he is under contract, so uh, he wants to be traded and they don't have to trade him. So it's going to come down to whether Deshaun wants to sit out or whether the Houston Texans at some point say, okay, we're going to go ahead and try and get what we can for him. But it's unfortunate that they can't work this out because I think Deshaun is great for the city of Houston, but uh, I just think he's uh, played his last game there. Have you seen a change, Warren, in the players? I mean, obviously you have because they have changed. And I ask you because I know you mentor them. I think we talked about Keith Price, or as we called him around here, Teeth Price, because he's always smiling, the yeah. former Washington Husky. And he told me what you did for him. They just don't put up yeah. with crap anymore. And that's probably a good thing. Like, have you noticed that with these young players? 
Yeah, I have. They feel like they understand their power now. They understand that they have a little bit more power than they used to, and especially quarterbacks. Um, um, but because of the way the contracts are, are geared now, there's more guaranteed money in these deals. And and uh, I, I, I just think they feel like with their with their voices that they have in the in the social media world where they can put whatever their feelings are right out there into the fan base, they just have a lot more to say and they have a lot more um, – uh, power because of that so i'm happy for it because there was a time where you the nfl just said you play here or you don't play anywhere else where now players are starting to have a little bit more of a voice and a little bit more of a say so about where they work yeah you know what i don't i'm kind of happy about it too initially i didn't like it then i thought we put up with so much crap me one thousandth of what you put up with imagine if you had a voice back in the day right like these kids do now i can't imagine what you would have said now the last time you were on, I asked you for a Saskatchewan memory, and you said you remember the wind howling outside your hotel window at the Hotel Saskatchewan. We got an Argo fan wrote in, Chris Bird. He says, does Mr. Moon have any good stories related to playing at CNE Stadium in Toronto? By the way, he kicked our butts here too. What, what do you remember about playing in Toronto? Um, I, we used to love going to Toronto because for us in Edmonton, coming from you know a relatively small city, that was like going to the big city, like going from, say, uh, I don't know, uh, somewhere in, in Idaho to go to New York City. So <laughs> we um, we really relished it. I mean, the guys, I'll tell you one thing they really looked forward to. We didn't have a Wendy's hamburger uh, joint in, uh, in Edmonton. So the first place everybody went to once we got off the airplane we went straight to the Wendy's over by by uh, Eaton Center, and and everybody was getting hamburgers and fries and all this all this junk food the night before a game. But that's what we look forward to: was going to the big city, being able to have a Wendy's hamburger, and then go to Eaton Center and walk around and see a, a huge mall like that. It was it was just a beautiful city, a clean city, and we felt like we were in the big city when we got to Toronto, and that's why we wanted to play well when we were there. Boy, there's, uh, I started something. We got a flood of questions coming in, and I'm not going to keep you too long. But Richard Allender, I believe he's in Oklahoma, he has written in and says, Mr. Moon, thoughts on NFL rivalries versus CFL rivalries? And if I may, Doug Flutie on that topic said they're no different. To Flutie, they weren't. How do you see? You know what we're talking about here. Edmonton, Calgary versus you know whoever, Seattle, San Francisco, something like that. It was nothing bigger than uh, Edmonton, Calgary, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I played in huge rivalries in the NFC Central where I was with Houston, and we had rivalries against the Cleveland Browns and also the Pittsburgh Steelers. But I tell you what, when, when we played on Labor Day in, uh, in, in Calgary, there was nothing like it. I mean, there's people outside your window in the street chanting so we couldn't sleep at night. There's people flipping the uh, – the fire alarm, so we would wake up in the middle of the night. Anything they could do to disrupt us to get ready for that game, they just added fuel to the fire. And then we wanted to win so much so much more because of what people were trying to do to us to distract us for that football game. So that rivalry was intense. You felt it in the stands. Uh, when you came onto the football field, you felt it from the Calgary Stampeders. And we had some great battles over the years. From our intern, Alan, the Asian sensation, he says, Hey, Mr. Moon. What's your opinion on this year's draft for quarterbacks? It's a good one. It is a good draft for quarterbacks. Uh, you, you look at uh, you know the top of the draft. It seems like everybody wants to go with Trevor Lawrence from from uh, Clemson, and, and they probably should. Um, you know, the kid from uh, from BYU is, is up there. I think the Chase kid Fields. From Fields yeah. from Ohio. Get from Ohio Justin State, Fields. Chase Justin Fields. Fields, yeah. So those are three legitimate guys, and then the kid uh, Mac Mac Jones from Alabama. He's a really good player as well. You saw what he was able to do this year as a Heisman Trophy finalist. So there's four really good first round type quarterbacks, and who knows before the whole draft process is over, there might be another one that sneaks in there. So. Every year, quarterback is going to be a position that everybody has to have because of the way the rules are, are geared in the NFL right now. You've got to have a good quarterback in order to win. So there's four good young ones in, in the draft this year that uh, you can kind of build off of one of those guys. All right. I got to get back on track with Super Bowl talk here. So thank you, Warren, for answering their questions. Uh, and of course, it is Super sure. Week. Our coverage brought to you by Original 16 Canadian Ultra Beer. Uh, so to the matchup. Is it, is, is it too simple to say Brady versus Mahomes? Is that a disservice to the other factors of this game? 
Well, it, it always comes, like I said, to the quarterbacks just earlier in that question about the draft. The quarterbacks are going to be focal to any game going on, especially in this era of football, because you're throwing the football all over the place. The running game, it's just part of it to keep the defenses off balance. And it's important, but it's definitely not as important as having that trigger man. So uh, I see why they get all the attention. But, yeah, there's going to be more going on in this game besides those two guys. You, you look at the uh, Tampa Bay defense. They have really played well pretty much all season, and they've really taken their game up to a new level in the playoffs. Uh, a very dominant pass rush up front. Um, they play a physical brand. You know, Todd Bowles, their defensive coordinator, loves to attack. So I don't know if he's going to be able to attack as much against uh, Kansas City because of their speed. Because when you you attack and you don't get there and you're in man-for-man coverage, you've got a Tyreek Hill or a Kelsey or – Sammy Watkins, those guys are flying through the secondary. So th- there's a lot of speed that you have to worry about. If you miss one guy, all of a sudden it's a touchdown. So he's going to have to play a checkers match with, with Kansas City. Sometimes when he's going he's gonna to pressure, sometimes he's got to lay back and try and uh, make Patrick Mahomes be, be uh, patient. And it's the same thing with, um, with uh, Kansas City. Their defensive front has got to put pressure on Tom Brady and make him uncomfortable in this game. If they don't make him uncomfortable, he'll pick you apart. So the defenses are going to be huge in this ball game, especially the front fours trying to put pressure on these two quarterbacks and make them do things they don't want to do. Warren, since let's just stay in the quarterback vein. What's the better story? Tom Brady getting his revenge, winning his seventh Super Bowl, but not with the Patriots, or the kid Mahomes becoming the next one by winning this Super Bowl. What's what's the better story? Are you pulling for one or one over the other, or what do you what do you think is the better story? You know, I'm I'm pulling for Kansas City because that was where I played my last uh, my last year, and and I have a lot of good relationships there. I know Patrick Mahomes, uh, you know, pretty well. Uh, he's a fantastic kid. I know his mom and his brother, and um, so so that part of it I love. I love the organization. Tom Brady's a, a young guy that I you know I met when. He he came into the league, and, and you know, I, I was able to give him some advice early in his career. Uh, just a, a outstanding person, really good young man. But um, I just, um, I'm, I'm rooting for Kansas City. So uh, I just think that the better story would be if, if Tom Brady was to win, because everybody used to say, can he win without Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots? And he would show that he could if he won the game. So that's a huge story, especially for a guy 43 years old. I think everybody assumes Patrick Mahomes is is supposed to win this football game, so it's not as big a surprise or anything like that. But Tom Brady going to a new team in a pandemic, 43 years old, winning another championship, that that's probably a bigger story. But I'm rooting for the Kansas City Chiefs. Do you have a prediction? I think it's going to be a high-scoring game, and I think Kansas City has just a little bit more firepower. I think they win the game something like 35-30. <laughs> I got it here because uh, I got I got Bucks thirty seven thirty. I'm writing everybody's down thirty five thirty. You said right? All right. Uh, hey, nobody will remember though. Warren. Hey, thirty five thirty one. Thirty five thirty one. Okay, I got gotcha. you. I got to just say this, man. Just before I let you go, nine time Pro Bowler, five time Great Cup champion. You and Bud Grant are the only two in both the Pro Football Hall of Fame and the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. I said you were the only one yesterday, and the Canadian Football Hall of Fame guys wrote me and said, no, 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 Bud Grant's in there too. What is that? <laughs> only player. Only player. That's what, I, that's what I told them. What does it mean to you to be in both halls of fame, Warren? You, you know, it's not like something that I, that I felt like I've done something special from every other player that's played football because every other player didn't have an opportunity to play in both leagues. But I did, and uh, because I was able to show that I could play at a high level in both leagues, that's something I'm very, very proud of, that no matter what offense you put me in, no matter what team you put me on, I was going to try and be successful. So that was just a a tribute to my my hard work that I put in and and all the great players that I played around that helped me get to that. But uh, that's something I'm proud of, that no matter where you put me, I was able to still play at a high level. Awesome. I'm glad you are proud of it. You should be. And I, I really enjoy our visit, sir. I appreciate it. Enjoy the game. I look forward to our next chat and stay safe down there. Yeah, you do the same. Have a great uh, Super Bowl weekend and uh, hopefully we get through this whole pandemic and get back to normal here pretty soon. <laughs> Sooner than... your out there. Yeah, we will. Absolutely. Thanks, Warren. Mr. Moon, right. 
as viewer Tom Geiger writes, and he says, when the majority of fan questions start with Mr. Moon, you know the level of respect we all have for him. Oh, yeah. So, as I said, nine-time Pro Bowler, uh, five-time Great Cap champion, CFL Most Outstanding Player, two-time NFL Passing Yards leader, Walter Payton, NFL Man of the Year. It's that long. We'll be back with a sports update. Uh, lots going on, everybody. It is Canada's daytime sports talk show. We'll continue in a moment on Game Plus TV Network, live daily on YouTube, and listen live at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. Hey, it's Warren Dean. I understand more than anyone how changing weather affects your day, and that's no different for your vehicle. That's why I look to the experts at Suds Full Service Car Wash. They have a wide range of exterior washes, including Lava Shield with towel dry. Looking good, Natalie and Kirby. And don't forget their famous Suds Ultimate. Thoroughly cleans the interior of your car. Open Monday to Saturday, no appointment necessary. Head to Suds Full Service Car Wash today, where they treat you like family. At Prairie Mobile, you can get the phone you want when you want. All smartphones are $0 every day. With convenient locations across Saskatchewan, Prairie Mobile, your Sastel authorized dealer, has you covered. Visit us online at prairiemobile.com. Introducing Original 16 Hard Seltzer. The refreshing taste of delicious peach with vodka made in Saskatchewan. New Hard Seltzers from Original 16. There's something for everyone at the Mad Greek Eatery. Delicious Greek dishes, pizza, lasagna, pastas, soups, salads, and much more. The Mad Greek Eatery brings the best authentic Greek cuisine right to you. Available for licensed dining, events, delivery, and takeout. For the best taste and huge portions, there is only one place. Visit the Mad Greek Eatery, downtown Moose Jaw. Call for takeout and delivery today. IKS Live. IKS Live. Western Canada's premier production services company. LED. LED sign rentals. Video. Video production. Event. Event management. Look no further than IKS Live. Visit our website. IKS Live. Always the best seat in the house. IKS Live. back and kicking it let's head back to the studio here's rock uh by the way for our new viewers that jeep is my jeep big bird the elderly man riding with me is john frenzy you'll see him on friday my, my jeep right now is literally in the barn in my brother's barn until the snow goes away and you sadists like the snow i don't get it i know that was quite you tweeted that eh yeah what, his he, it wasn't even the uh, twitter poll today no, question, just but the, he just tweeted, would you rather live in the Sun Belt full time or enjoy all four seasons? Like my mom said, she's like, I could never live in the South. 52% are with you. 
of course. It's close, though. <laughs> yes. It's close. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to start the viewer takeover early, by the way. But I, if I may, I really enjoyed this yesterday. For our viewers that are watching on Game Plus television, wherever you are, across all 10 provinces in 31 states, if you can take a photo of the TV while you're watching the show of the screen and tweet it wherever you're watching from, or you can text us here on the Prairie Mobile text line to 840-8777. We'll share it. We just posted yesterday Cincinnati, uh, Wolfville, Nova Scotia, St. John's, Newfoundland, and Labrador. Let's just let's get it rolling here because as of Monday, it was the free preview on Bell Alliant TV, and it's just that's been a cornucopia of new viewers. Yeah, let us know where you're watching from, please. It would help us out a great deal. My friend Mike Lee says my favorite season is winter in Maui. <laughs> my Dale Mike. <laughs> yeah, one day we'll get there. Yeah, I don't. I don't need to see snow. I don't enjoy it. I don't like anything about it. See ya. Especially when they started playing hockey in the Sun States. If I can go watch hockey and wear shorts to the rink, that's why I'm a Vegas Golden Knights fan. We've covered this. That's right. Yeah. The National Lacrosse League has canceled plans for an abbreviated 2020-21 season due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. The league said in a statement it will now focus on starting a full season this fall. The NLL had said in October it was targeting the weekend of April 9th to 11th to begin a 2020-21 campaign. The season has traditionally started in December. It's brutal. There are five NLL teams in Canada. They just announced an expansion team to Fort Worth, Texas. We're huge fans of the NLL. And I said to Darren, how are they paying their staff? His answer, I don't know. know. That's horrible, which reminds me. And I said we're going to get to viewer takeover. We we will, because there are questions on the text line relating to that. But Continuing on with the sports uh, break here, the Toronto Blue Jays are bringing back a familiar face. Veteran lefty Francesco Lariano has agreed to a minor league contract that includes an invitation to spring training. The 37-year-old did not pitch in the majors during the pandemic-altered 2020 season, but he pitched for the Jays in 2016 and 17 before getting traded to Houston. Meanwhile, catcher Josh uh, Fegley is retiring from baseball after eight major league seasons, a week shy of his 33rd birthday. His agent, Pro Star Management, said today on Twitter that family considerations and business opportunities factored into his decision as COVID continues to kill more careers. Yeah, but at least you didn't die. A coalition of 180 rights groups uh, is calling for a boycott of next year's Beijing Winter Olympics tied to reported human rights abusers against ethnic minorities in China. The games are to open in one year and are set to go forward despite the pandemic. The coalition is composed of groups representing Tibetans, Inner Mongolians, and residents of Hong Kong and others. Quiet night in the NHL with just two games. The Tampa Bay Lightning host the Detroit Red Wings and the Philadelphia Flyers entertain the Boston Bruins. The North Division resumes play Thursday with three games. This sports update for the Tap Brew House and Drive Through Liquor Store corner of Rochdale and Pasqua. And for Ben Cahoon's G2G Protein Bars now with eight amazing flavors, including the new almond mocha. Order yours now at g2gbars.ca. Told you that we have messages here from the viewers on a variety of things. John in Edmonton says, Rod, what do you have to say to all the young hockey players out there that are upset that their seasons got canceled and to the parents that think it's not fair that the NHL and soon-to-be WHL Central Division is starting soon, they get to play and their kids can't. John, I have nothing to say to them. I didn't make these decisions. Is that me weaseling off the hook? I don't think so. It's not my responsibility. Ask the Premier Jason Kenney. Ask um, Dr. Hinshaw. Ask those people. I don't have to answer for them. I didn't make the decisions. Let them answer those questions. I don't know why you're asking me. Brady in Saskatoon writes in. He's covering a lot of topics here. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Hey, Rod, Habs win back-to-back. Tyler Toffoli leads the NHL in goals. Fred Van Vliet be balling last night. And he goes on to say, Raptors greatest of all time in order. Kyle Lowry, 
Kawhi Leonard, DeMar DeRozan, Vince Carter, Chris Bosh, and then a tie between Spicy P and Fred Van Vliet. No, Brady, 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 Brady. You're not going along with this, are you? Chris Bosh isn't in anywhere on my list for <laughs> no, the Raptors. No, you can't put Kawhi Leonard at number two for one season. That's it. One. Kyle Lowry, I have time for that. I absolutely do. And I don't know, when we talk about Vince Carter, when you think of the Raptors and their history at this point in time, do you not have Vince Carter very high? Very. Yeah. Chris Bosh? Let's break, okay? I might be sentimental, but I'd have Vince Carter at the top of my list. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Although Kyle Lowry's a heart and soul guy, and he won a ship. For sure. Let's let's kick this around when we come back. I'd like to hear from you viewers, okay? All you Raptors fans out there. It's Canada's daytime sports talk show, and we'll be right back. You're watching on Game Plus TV Network, live daily on YouTube, and listen live for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions is Saskatchewan's only full-service supply chain company. Strategic sourcing, PO creation, and order expediting, VMI and vending solutions, and free delivery are just a few of the supply chain services we provide. If your company needs it, Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions can get it for you. Price, quality, service, Rockstar Supply Chain Solution is helping Saskatchewan companies buy better. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. This right here is time well spent. Why not pour yourself a smooth Saskatchewan-made Original 16? Warm up to the opportunity to seize the day. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC. We continue to follow strict COVID-19 guidelines, but we've also made it easier than ever to skip the showroom and shop online. Trade up to an all-new 2021 GMC Yukon, Sierra, or Buick Encore GX and get super low payments and super high trade-in values all month long. Plus, shop online or in-store and shop worry-free with our great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. It's time to trade and upgrade at Capital GMC in Regina. An Original 16 to fit your active lifestyle. Introducing Original 16 Canadian Ultra Lager. Just 80 calories and 2.5% alcohol. Taste without compromise. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard, and 2355 First Avenue in Regina.
You got something to say? You want to add to the show? What are you waiting for? Don't just sit there. Say something. Now, back to the studio with Rod. Hi. <laughs> I hear Ryan laughing in the back. That's always a good sign, our technical producer. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kinsman Telemiracle 5050 draw is live. The first ever online 5050 in support of the Kinsman Telemiracle. The Kinsman Foundation is helping people every day improve their quality of life and independence through gifts of mobility equipment and medical travel assistance. So the draw is live, and we're asking you to please purchase your tickets at telemiracle5050.ca. You can imagine the challenges that Telemiracle is facing due to COVID, but the demand for their help has not gone down. Darren, as you well know. Probably gone up. We've got the running total over my shoulder here on a daily basis. I'm just asking you to go and purchase your tickets. You can buy one for $20, five for $50, 20 tickets for $100, or 100 tickets for $250. The draw will be made on Friday, February 26th. The winner will be announced on February 27th, just before the start of the Telemiracle 45 Telethon on CTV. Please help us out. You know how important Telemiracle is to this province. You have to be 19 years of age or older and physically in this province to purchase your tickets. So if you're outside the province, get a friend here to do it. Can you guys please put the comment up from Brady? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. They all started laughing. Here it is. No, you had it. You had it. Oh, it was a swear in it, so you can't. He basically said, I love how Rod... Says he doesn't follow the NBA, but craps all over a guy's list who's only been following it for seven to eight years. <clears throat> Brady, I'm going to tell you, because obviously your parents didn't. I think he's 18. There was life before you came out of the tunnel. So you need to think about that. So go look back at the historical significance of who the greatest Toronto Raptors are. You get it, right? Oh, yeah. But you have to understand there was a world before you were around. So if we're going to sit and talk about who the greatest Raptors are, all, are of all time, they've been around since 1995, not the seven to eight years that you've been following the team. Yes. Well, remember this, and this is, I really believe this. If it wasn't for Vince Carter, the Raptors might have gone the way of the Vancouver Grizzlies. Boom. What happened in Vancouver? There was no stars, right? Yeah, they had the big white guy down the middle that nobody remembers his name, but they didn't have a star, a superstar. And Vince Carter was an all-world superstar. Global star. Global star. What he was doing in slam dunk competitions and at all-star games, right? So without him, I think Toronto maybe goes the way of the Vancouver Grizzlies. Save the team. Can you put up the comment from Alan, the intern, the Asian sensation, who brought in 12 hobo donuts today? And for that reason, Alan's going to our Hall of Fame of interns. Bosch made the Raptors relevant for the longest time. He got us through the dark ages. He took over Vince's place as Vince left. He is definitely up there as one of the Raptors' all-time greats. That's from Alan. You're in journalism, right, Alan? Check your use of the term there. Brady just said... You just finished saying you don't follow the NBA. Well, maybe that's incorrect, which was, I don't follow cricket. I can't name one of their players. But I guess I follow the NBA enough to know the answer to these things, or at least be in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Our director of scouting, Craig Smith, writes in and says, Bryant Reeves. Big country. That's who it, yeah, there you go. Is that, that's who you were thinking of? Yeah. Big, big country? Big, I knew big country. I couldn't remember Bryant Reeves. It was just yeah. not on the tip of my Mike tongue. Bibby. Thank you, Craig. Guys like that. Brooke Andrusik says, ding, 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 Roddy. Hey, hey, listen, I'm not upset at Brady. I'm just trying to help the young man. What do we got tomorrow? Winnipeg Blue Bombers assistant GM Ted Gavaya. NFL Pro Bowler Gus Ferrat. NFL, CFL alum, Brandon London. So our Super Week really continues in earnest. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow here on the old RP show. What do we got? A little less than a minute. I think we've 45. We've covered everything today. Somebody said who the, who the rock star of the day would be. Send us messages, folks. Two things I will ask you to do. Tell us who you think is the rock star of the day today. Craig Smith, Mike Abumeshrick, Alex Goche with a surprise appearance. Mm -hmm. The actual GOAT. And Warren Moon. And also, wherever you're watching from on the program today, tweet us, 
Texas, take a shot of the screen, and uh, we'll retweet it from all our social channels. Caesar wrote me. He says, I was going to take a pic and say Regina working, but your picture on my computer looks like Bruce Willis with a mohawk. I'll take that. Yeah. And the star of Die Hard 6. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Rod Peterson. Okay. Uh, we're out of here. I'd love to get to your comments, but uh, we'll see you tomorrow, everybody. 12 Eastern on Game Plus. <laughs> We don't know what we're doing.